Who are the seven spirits? The identity of the Holy Spirit. A reference to the seven spirits appears several times in the book of Revelation. The seven spirits introduced. In the introduction to the book of Revelation, John mentions the seven spirits. John, to the seven churches that are in the province of Asia, grace be granted to you, and peace, inner calm and spiritual well-being, from him who is existing forever and who was continually existing in the past, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits that are before his throne. Revelation 1 verse 4, Amplified Bible. Here the greeting comes from the seven spirits. Jesus has the seven spirits. In chapter 3, we come across a mention of the seven spirits of God once again. This time, it is revealed that Jesus possesses both the seven spirits and the seven stars. Furthermore, a message is conveyed to the angel of the church in Sardis. This message begins with the words of the one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. To the angel, divine messenger of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name, reputation that you are alive. But in reality, you are dead. Revelation 3 verse 1 the seven spirits are linked with fiery torches. Later it says the spirits are torches. We read the following. Revelation 4 verse 5, Amplified Bible. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumbling sounds and peals of thunder. Seven lamps of fire were burning in front of the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. In this case, the seven spirits are said to be seven torches. We come across a mention of Jesus Christ, who is referred to as the slaughtered lamb possessing these spirits. And there, between the throne with the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb, Christ, standing, bearing scars and wounds, as though it had been slain with seven horns, complete power, and with seven eyes complete knowledge, which are the seven spirits of God who have been sent on duty into all the earth. Revelation 5 verse 6. The following text discusses the passages in the book of Revelation that mention the seven spirits of God. The question that arises is, who are these spirits? To answer this question, we need to make several observations. Firstly, Let's start with what we know for certain. There is only one Holy Spirit. First, we want to emphasize that according to the Bible, there is only one Holy Spirit. Paul wrote the following to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 11 All these things, the gifts, the achievements, the abilities, the empowering, are brought about by one and the same Holy Spirit distributing to each one individually just as he chooses. To this verse, many others could be added. The united testimony of Scripture is that there is only one Spirit of God, one Holy Spirit. They are different ministries of the one Spirit. If the expression seven spirits refers to the Holy Spirit, it does not mean that there are seven different spirits or that the Holy Spirit is somehow divided into seven different parts. What do these seven spirits refer to? This question might arise in one's mind while reading about the seven spirits mentioned in the Bible. Some scholars believe that these seven spirits represent the different ways the Spirit of God expresses Himself. Additionally, some people find an explanation of these spirits in the book of Isaiah. In the beginning of chapter 11, Isaiah writes about the seven spirits in detail. Isaiah 11 verse 2, Amplified Bible. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and strength, the Spirit of knowledge and of the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. 
Isaiah describes the various aspects of the ministry of the Spirit of the Lord in this passage. The verse mentions the Spirit in seven different ways. The Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of the Lord, is also the Spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. Hence, if we interpret it correctly, the seven spirits are not different spirits, but rather refer to the multifaceted ministry of the one Holy Spirit. The number seven refers to completeness. It's important to consider another point. In scripture, the number seven is often associated with completeness. For instance, the creation of the world was completed in six days with God taking a rest on the seventh day. Therefore, Israel was instructed to work for six days and rest on the seventh day, following the pattern set by creation. This was written by Moses. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath, a day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day you shall not do any work, you and your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the temporary resident, foreigner, who stays within your city gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything that is in them, and he rested, ceased, on the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy, that is, set apart for his purposes. Exodus 20 verses 9 to 11, Amplified Bible. The creation and work week is completed in seven days. Similarly, the reference to the seven spirits signifies the completeness of the person and the work of the Holy Spirit, rather than the existence of seven distinct spirits. In sum, while the identity of the seven spirits mentioned in the book of Revelation may be unclear, it is certain that there is only one Holy Spirit. Who are the seven spirits? In the book of Revelation, there are several instances where the seven spirits are mentioned. However, the identity of these spirits is not clearly explained. It should be noted that there is only one Holy Spirit, and we cannot divide him into seven parts. There have been a number of suggestions regarding the identity of the seven spirits. In the book of Revelation, the term seven spirits could be interpreted as referring to the different ministries of the Holy Spirit. This idea is supported by the fact that the book of Isaiah mentions seven specific characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it's possible that the seven spirits mentioned in Revelation represent the diverse ways in which the Holy Spirit works. It is possible that the number seven is used symbolically to represent the completeness of the Holy Trinity. This number is used to denote completeness in both the creation account and the work week for humans. In the creation account, God worked for six days and rested on the seventh. Similarly, humans work for six days and then rest on the seventh day. It is plausible that the number seven is used in reference to the spirits to convey the same idea of completeness. In summary, there are several possible solutions to the question of the identity of the seven spirits, but we may not know which one is correct. So, when we talk about the seven spirits before God's throne, we are being shown a picture of the Holy Spirit's perfect power and presence, fully and completely expressed. It's a way to help us understand the immense and complete nature of God's Spirit. Revelation 4 verse 5 From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumbling sounds and peals of thunder. Seven lamps of fire were burning in front of the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. God has a perfect number, and that is a symbol of his completeness. But humans, represented by the number six, just don't measure up to that perfection. They fall short, reminding us of our need for God's guidance and grace. Revelation 13 verse 18 Here is wisdom. Let the person who has enough insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the imperfect number of a man, and his number is 666. In the Bible, 
the Holy Spirit is shown in a perfect way, represented by the number seven. This is important to understand when we look at Revelation 4 verse 5. Here, John describes seeing the Spirit as seven bright lamps in front of God's throne. This image connects back to the old tabernacle that Moses built, where there was a golden lampstand and seven lamps in the holy place. It's like God was giving us a preview of His plan through that lampstand. Exodus 25 verse 31 You shall make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand and its base and its shaft shall be made of hammered work. Its cups, its calyxes, and its flowers shall be all of one piece with it. As we read on in Revelation, we note something else. Not only are the seven spirits of God before the throne in heaven, but they are upon someone. And they are also sent out into all the earth. Revelation 3 verse 1 To the angel, divine messenger of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name, reputation, that you are alive, but in reality, you are dead. Revelation 5 verse 6 And there were between the throne with the four living creatures, and among the elders I saw a lamb, Christ standing, bearing scars and wounds as though it had been slain, with seven horns, complete power, and with seven eyes, complete knowledge, which are the seven spirits of God who have been sent on duty into all the earth. Absolutely, the lamb which seemed to have been killed is right there in the center of the throne. And guess what? He, Jesus, is surrounded by the seven spirits of God. But there's more. These seven spirits are not just staying put, they've been sent worldwide. What are the seven spirits of God in the New Testament? When we explore the book of Revelation, we discover that the Holy Spirit is depicted as the seven spirits of God. This imagery aligns with what was foretold about Jesus in the prophecy found in Isaiah 2. Let's examine the seven spirits of God as they are presented in the New Testament. Number 1. The Spirit of Truth John 16 verse 13 But when He, the Spirit of Truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth, full and complete truth. For He will not speak on His own initiative, but He will speak whatever He hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son. And He will disclose to you what is to come in the future. In a way, the promise was fulfilled when the writings of the New Testament inspired by God Himself were finished. But even now, the Holy Spirit guides us to understand the truth, always aligning with the Scriptures. God's final and most authoritative message to us was completed with the New Testament. The main job of the Holy Spirit is to show us who Jesus is, to testify about Him. The Holy Spirit uses a variety of methods and gifts to do this, but the goal is always to help us see and understand Jesus more clearly. Number 2. The Spirit of Holiness Romans 1 verse 4 And, as to His divine nature, according to the Spirit of Holiness was openly designated to be the Son of God with power in a triumphant and miraculous way, by His resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Number 3. The Spirit of Life Romans 8 verse 2 For the law of the Spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being, has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Walking in the Spirit means letting the Holy Spirit guide every part of your life. It's about moving forward and growing continuously under His direction. Even though our human desires, our flesh, are always present, they don't control us when we walk in the Spirit. Yes, these desires are there, fighting against us, causing trouble and sorrow, and they will be there until we reach heaven. But remember, they are like unwanted guests. They don't rule over us. We don't follow their lead or let them dictate our actions. We don't use them as our compass, nor do we let them push us into doing wrong. We acknowledge their presence, but choose not to follow them, keeping our steps in line with the Holy Spirit's guidance. Number 4. The Spirit of Sonship 
Romans 8 verse 15 For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading again to fear of God's judgment, but you have received the spirit of adoption and sons, the spirit producing sonship, by which we joyfully cry, Abba, Father. How does the Holy Spirit guide us in our lives? The Holy Spirit guides us by showing us the way we should go. The Holy Spirit draws us closer to God and His purpose. The Holy Spirit exercises authority over our lives, guiding our decisions and actions. We experience the Holy Spirit's guidance as we actively respond to and follow His lead. Remember, the Holy Spirit doesn't force us to move against our will. Instead, He gently leads us. This is the contrast between the devil's forceful pushing and the Holy Spirit's gentle guidance. When the devil takes control, he aggressively drives people. Just like the incident where the herd of pigs was driven into the sea, a true sign of the Holy Spirit's presence isn't frenzy or chaos, but peace and purpose. Where does the Holy Spirit lead us? The Holy Spirit leads us to turn away from our sins and change our lives. The Holy Spirit encourages us to focus less on ourselves and more on Jesus. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth, helping us understand God's will and ways. The Holy Spirit fosters love in our hearts, urging us to love God and others genuinely. The Holy Spirit directs us toward a holy life, one that is set apart for God and His service. The Holy Spirit makes us useful, equipping us to do good works and serve others in His name. Living as a child of God is about having a close, happy connection with Him, which is completely different from feeling trapped or scared because of strict rules. As God's child, you get to experience a relationship so deep and loving that you can call Him Papa, Abba Father. Number 5. The Spirit of Wisdom Ephesians 1 verse 17 I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation that gives you a deep and personal and intimate insight into the true knowledge of Him. For we know the Father through the Son, we read, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Paul prayed earnestly for the Ephesians, wishing that God would bless them with wisdom and reveal Himself to them more clearly. However, his intention was not for them to pry into others' lives or predict the future, as some might think when they hear about prophecy. Paul's desire was for them to deeply understand God. We need to focus on truly knowing God based on how He has shown Himself in the Bible and move away from any incorrect ideas we might have about Him. While it's important to know who we are, getting to know God is far more valuable and beneficial. Number 6. The Spirit of Grace Hebrews 10 verse 29 How much greater punishment do you think He will deserve, who has rejected and trampled underfoot the Son of God? and has considered unclean and common the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and has insulted the Spirit of grace who imparts the unmerited favor and blessing of God. Number 7. The Spirit of Glory 1 Peter 4 verse 14 If you are insulted and reviled for bearing the name of Christ, you are blessed, happy with life, joy, and comfort in God's salvation regardless of your circumstances. Because the Spirit of glory and God is resting on you and indwelling you, He whom they curse you glorify. When people criticize you for following Christ, consider it a blessing. It means you're truly walking with Jesus and enduring hardships because you're connected to Him. This kind of suffering is a special sign that you're living out your faith authentically. Time for a little application. If the Lord Jesus counted on the Holy Spirit so deeply, think about how much more we need this support. Remember, even though Jesus came into this world pure and without sin, He didn't act alone. He depended entirely on the Holy Spirit and His Father for guidance and strength throughout His life and work. Now, consider our situation. 
We're born into sin and live in a world full of it. How much more do we need the Holy Spirit to guide and sustain us? Why do we stumble and fail? Could it be because we often think we are enough on our own? That we can handle life without any divine help? We need to realize we are like ships that can't sail without wind, branches that can't grow without sap, and coals that can't burn without fire. On our own, we accomplish nothing of lasting value or true significance. It's only through the Holy Spirit's power that we can live lives that truly matter and fulfill God's purposes for us. The Bible is full of symbols that refer to the Holy Spirit. Now that we've looked at who He is and what He is named, we can also study the properties of the metaphors used to describe Him. Number 1. Water In many areas in the Bible, water is used as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Why is this an appropriate metaphor? Through the observation of the relationship between water and human life, we can understand a lot about the Holy Spirit. Firstly, water is indispensable in order to preserve life. Human beings are composed of 60% water. If dehydrated by much, a person is in risk of losing physical life. Similarly, the Holy Spirit is crucial for our spiritual life. John 7 verses 37 to 38. Now, on the last and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood and called out in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being will flow continually rivers of living water. We are born again of the Holy Spirit, and by constantly drinking of the Holy Spirit, we can preserve our spiritual life. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 For by one Holy Spirit we were all baptized into one body, spiritually transformed, united together, whether Jews or Greeks, Gentiles, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Holy Spirit, since the same Holy Spirit fills each life. Water is also indispensable to the purification of our bodies. If we had no path to water for a long time, wouldn't the filthiness and corruption ultimately make us feeble, even to death? Each day we wash our bodies, our dresses, our kitchen counters. Therefore, our spiritual life should be cleansed every day by the Holy Spirit. Of course, we are cleansed of our sins when we believe in the precious blood of Jesus, but the Holy Spirit, when washing us with water, refreshes us and renews our hearts so that we can lead a clean life. Titus 3 verse 5 He saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we have done, but because of His own compassion and mercy, by cleansing of the new birth, spiritual transformation, regeneration, and renewing by the Holy Spirit. Number 2. Fire Matthew 3 verse 11 As for me, I baptize you with water because of your repentance, that is because you are willing to change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret your sin, and live a changed life. But he, the Messiah who is coming after me, is mightier, more powerful, more noble than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to remove, even as his slave. He will baptize you who truly repent with the Holy Spirit, and you who remain unrepentant with fire, judgment. Fire is a popular sign of the Holy Spirit, but the truth that the metaphor suggests is not so well known. Firstly, Fire was used as the symbol of the Holy Spirit because God's presence appeared in the fire of the Old Testament, without exception. Some wonderful historical events show that fire accompanies the presence of God. In the days when Moses kept the flock of his father-in-law on Mount Horeb, Moses met with God when he looked at a flaming bush. Exodus 3 verses 1 to 5 now Moses was keeping the flock of Jethro, Raoul, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, Sinai, the mountain of God. 
The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing flame of fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was on fire, yet it was not consumed. So Moses said, I must turn away from the flock and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that, he turned away from the flock to look. God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then God said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet out of respect, because the place on which you are standing is holy ground. In 1 Kings 18, when Elijah contended with the 450 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, he insisted that he who answered by fire before all the people would be God. When Elijah indeed received the answer by fire, he defeated the idolaters. After the ascension of Jesus, 120 disciples gathered in an upper room in Jerusalem. They encouraged each other in the midst of much despair and were waiting for the promise of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, then on the Feast of Pentecost. Acts 2 verses 2 to 3 And suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were being distributed among them, and they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. Here we can see that the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus sent, also appeared in the midst of fire. It is evident that God works in the flame of the Holy Spirit. Second, fire burns away that which is unwanted. The most precise mode of purification known to mankind is by fire. All sorts of dirty and ugly things are burned off. As the Holy Spirit dwells in our lives, He consumes sins in us. Jeremiah 23 verse 29 Is not my word like fire that consumes all that cannot endure the test, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the most stubborn rock in pieces? Holy and righteous life is impossible if this consuming work does not take place in our hearts. Thirdly, fire provides us with light that enlarges the sphere and hours of our activity. Human civilization is known as the civilization of light. If it were possible to live without the light of the sun, can you imagine how furiously people would resist the lack? How diligently people seek the fire that illuminates the physical world, while indifferent to the fire of the Holy Spirit that brightens the eternal soul. The Holy Spirit comes into our hearts, pitch dark with sin and death, and by shedding His divine light of heaven, he helps us to realize eternal life and see the secret of heaven. Fourth, fire symbolizes the Holy Spirit because fire gives us supernatural zeal.